Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Today, today, we're, today we're going to uh, continue where we left off the other first time uh, after we have created the masks. Now we're going to apply them in the video sequence editor, starting with this one, which is the mask for the blur. So let's get to it. Uh, right now we're in the motion tracking screen layout. We're going to go back to video editing. And we are already at the start point for this section of the video. So if you've seen my other video about using color strips as mask modifiers to apply a blur effect on someone's face, this is the same process, more or less. We have to add an adjustment layer strip, and that's just to set the boundaries for the Gaussian blur that we put on top of that. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I will go to add effect strip adjustment layer, and then I will size it out. There we go. And now to this adjustment layer, I will add effect strip Gaussian blur. And let's just put it right here in the middle. And with it selected, let's go ahead and set the blur size. So I'll do, let's say 10 and 10. Okay, or let's go a little bit more, 20 and 20. All right, and now it's time to make use of the mask that we just created. So to do that, we go over here under the modifiers tab, click add strip modifier, choose mask. And this time we have to click on mask over here. And then once that's done, we can click inside this empty area and select the mask to use. So I had named it Mask for Blur, so we'll go ahead and click on that. And there we have it. So now this blur is now in effect. And all we need to do to finish the job is go back to Strip and change Blend to Overdrop. And there we have it. So if I scrub from here to there, you can see the blur effect. Let me make that a little bit bigger. The blur effect is only on where the mask is. So because uh, when we were creating the mask, as we scrubbed through it back then inside the motion tracking screen layout, we already saw that the it wouldn't work in the last few frames because the person moves outside of that mask area. But we'll fix that in a future video. Right now it's just showing you how to apply it. Okay, so that was it, very easy to do. Um, let's talk about how to do uh, the total censoring where you just their, their their face is totally cut out okay so to do that I am going to create a full copy of this scene and this will be for um, let's say face removal so for um, this face removal I'm going to show you two ways to do it one with the adjustment layer because we already have it and one using keyframes Okay, so let's start by getting rid of that Gaussian blur. I'll just click press X so I can delete that. And now to this adjustment layer, I will have that selected and right click that to select. Again, again, we're going to modifiers and add strip modifier and mask. And again, we have to click on mask. And this time we will pick the other mask. Uh, I think it was my first mask. And the mask is applied, but there's a problem. Um, the way the mask was created, it's defined so that it will keep whatever we drew or created the, the circle around. Uh, but we want the reverse. We want to see everything except this person's face. So to do that, we need to go back into the motion tracking screen layout. And over here, click this button here to select that mask, my first mask. And the option to invert the, uh, the mask is over here on the right hand side. Right here next to Opacity, there's this half white, half black box. We just need to click that and that's done. Now this mask will do what we need. So we will return to the video editing screen layout. And it doesn't look like anything's happened. 
That's because we need to hit refresh sequencer. There we go. And now we can see we we can now or we can't see this person's face. Uh, and like usual, this checkerboard effect means that if we render out right now, uh, it will just be black, and that's good enough for me. So let me show you the other way of applying a mask without using the adjustment layer. So I am going to, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this adjustment layer. This time I'll go to strip, erase strips, okay. And I will apply the mask modifier directly to the video strip. So I have it selected now. Go to modifiers, add strip modifier, mask, click on mask, and then select my first mask. And that's the first step because uh, by applying this mask, we've actually applied it across the entire uh, length of our video strip, right? If I scrub anywhere along here, you can see it's in effect the whole time. So what we can do is use keyframes to only turn it on when we want it. So to do that, I'm going to first jump, use just this marker menu, jump to next marker. This is where we need it to start. So I'm going to press the left arrow to go back one frame. And then over here, I'm going to click on this little eyeball that it mutes the modifier so it's not in effect. Okay, so now, now it looks normal. You know, let me let me hit the home button. There we go. Uh, so we can see the whole thing. And now with the mouse on top of that uh, button, I will press the I key to set a keyframe. Now I will move, push uh, the right arrow key to move one frame over. This is where it needs to be in effect. Now I will click the eyeball again. So now it is in effect. Press the I key to set that keyframe. And now I will again go to marker, jump to next marker. That's where it needs to end. And again, it's it's not following the face, but we'll fix that later. So now I will set a keyframe here. Actually, I don't need to set a keyframe. I can just move right over to here and click the eyeball and press I. And that should be it. So now if I scrub from this point and then mask is on, keep scrubbing, mask is off. That's it. All right, so now we've seen how to apply the masks within the video sequence editor that we created inside the movie clip editor of the motion tracking screen layout. Um, but we've got time. Let's, let's talk about a, a few more things. Uh, one thing is the fact that you can, you can kind of uh, get a nice faded effect to your masks. If I go back over to the scene where we're doing the blurring, and I zoom it in, you can see there's a pretty hard line between where the blur kicks in. We can soften that by adjusting our mask. So let me show you how. We'll go back into motion tracking, and I will go back to the mask for blur. The way to do it is by clicking under mask, transform, scale feather. As soon as you click that, and then you start moving the mouse, you can see it adds this uh, green outline around it. And this is going to be the area where it kind of begins to create that, that blurring effect. So I'll, I'll left click to finish it there. So now we've got you know, a good space between where the blur will definitely be happening and then where it's going to be partially happening. Let me show you something else too. Over up here, under, uh, where was it? Da -da -da -da. Mask display. If I click on overlay, then you can see how that would work. Because if you remember before, when we first started talking about mask modifiers, the idea was that white means uh, visible or it's an effect, and then black means not visible. So now that we've created this, this feather, you can see it's going from the full white to black. Okay, I'll check that, turn that off. Okay, so now let's see it in action. I'm going to go back into the video editing screen layout, hit the refresh sequencer, and there you go. You can see it's it's not that hard line anymore. We get the gradual, we have that gradual blur from here to here. 
Okay, so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do give a like and subscribe to see more content. And we'll see you next time. Bye now.